So I wasn't actually sure I was going to do one of these this week, but something happened over the weekend that I think uh, makes it worthwhile. And this is kind of a continuation from my video last week about mewling baby Milo Wolf, shown here, where I address the fact that he put me as a D-tier list influencer um, in his little ratings, because, you know, at his age, he's got enough experience to have a fucking opinion on anything. Now, as I pointed out, the real reason he put me as a D is because he got butt hurt in my Facebook group, and I was mean to him. Because if you look at the people in that group, they've all been mean to him. Whereas all the people in the S tier are part of the evidence-based fitness circle jerk under Brad that are helping him with his career. Huh, funny that. But the reason he claimed he put me in the D tier is because I cause drama by criticizing scientists. And I pointed out that for a supposed academic, that's one of the fucking dumbest thing I've ever heard. Science is, and has always, been based on debate, criticism, and argument. That's how science moves forward. I point out that all of the people that Milo is busy fellating, Brad, Brett, James, M Mike, all those people, they will happily criticize other science. Does he whine like a child about them? No, but he whines about me because he had no actual criticism of me, because none of them ever do. The reason he said that I'm wrong for causing drama by criticizing scientists is twofold. One, I criticize his little buddies in the industry. I will happily take on Brad, James, Helms, Menno, Isratel. Because I'm not part of their little circle and I don't have to fucking play politics. And I would take on anybody no matter who it was. My best buddy. If they say something stupid, I will call them out for it. Because science, true evidence-based science, should be about the facts, not the people involved. I don't give a fuck who's saying something stupid, including myself. If they're wrong, they're wrong. So that's the first reason Milo doesn't like me. I call out his buddies. But more importantly, in calling them out, they have never, ever, not once, been able to actually rebut me, and that's his real problem. I make them look bad, because all they can come up with is bullshit. And that leads me into the first topic today, which is logical fallacies. So all logical fallacy is is a type of argument that doesn't address the actual facts, and which, while it may sound valid, can be easily seen through with reasoning, right? Real arguments are rebutted by facts. Logical fallacies have nothing to do with facts. Here's just a few as an example. Appeal to emotion, appeal to faith, false dilemma, the slippery slope, the straw man argument, appeals to authority, and the ad hominem attack. And there's a whole bunch more, and I'll put a link to a list, or just go to fucking Wikipedia and it's there. And the fitness industry and people, especially when the arguments against me, love these things. Some examples. A straw man is responding to something that you're not saying. Mike Isertel did that in the whole failure thing. He said, well, Lyle's criticizing my training. No, I wasn't. He was able to rebut that because I wasn't actually saying it. That's a straw man argument. Appeal to authority is of the, well, I have a PhD. I have an MD. I went to a good university, or in most cases, the fitness industry, shitty universities. Right, Milo? Based on the idea that, well, I've got authority. Ergo, I'm right and you're not. And then finally, one of the favorites of the fitness industry, the ad, the ad hominem. And that's where you attack the person rather than the argument. You're small. You're weak. You're ugly. You're a woman. Ergo, you are wrong. That's not a fact. That's not a rebuttal. That's a personal attack. An example of an ad hominem would be if I said, Mike Isertail's diet and training information is shit because he's a failure as a bodybuilder. Now, I mean, it's true, he is a failure as a bodybuilder, and his information about diet and training are shit, but they're not shit because he's a failure. And you'll note that whenever I've criticized his information, because I don't give a fuck about his training or anything else, I criticize it based on the evidence and the facts about the information that he's giving. I'll make fun of him, like giving the excuse that it's because he didn't get a tan, but that's got nothing to do with my actual criticisms of his arguments. See the difference? Ad hominem is, you're X, ergo you're wrong. 
An actual fact-based argument is, here's why your facts are wrong based on evidence. And in dealing with the fitness industry in general, and especially the evidence-based fitness industry, the supposed scientists and academics who claim to rely on facts, who happily criticize others, who raise fucking hell when people does it to them, all they use when I bring up criticisms, the one that makes little Milo cry, is logical fallacies. I swear to God, these guys get a book of logical fallacies, but rather than using it as to understand why not to use these arguments, they use it as a how to win arguments on the internet. Win. Like I said, they would raise hell if anyone used these arguments against them, but they'll happily use them. And as an example, here's a list I put together a year or two ago of some of the gems of responses that I've gotten from the supposed scientists in this industry when I have criticized their work. And not all of them are logical fallacies. You'll note that it was described as these are not examples of scientific evidence, but there's lots and lots of logical fallacies that have been in there. Here's a quick run through. Fuck you, Lyle. An incredibly coherent response from Mike Isratel, PhD. You can trust me, Brad Schoenfeld defending why he doesn't have to blind himself. You don't even do science. Brad Schoenfeld and Leigh Norton have both used this, and I'm sure others have too. I outlifted you in high school slash lift more than you, Mike Isratel. You should base who you take advice on by their appearance, Mike Isratel, who has gone out of his way to criticize fucking Dorian Yates' training. Dorian won eight Olympias, Mike. You couldn't even get your tan right. Uh, flat out lies, Mike Isratel just made shit up. Uh, there's just no argument about it. Uh, doing a one hour and three minute straw man interview with a lifting dermatologist when Mike told to tell lies and make personal attacks. That was something else Mike did. Uh, both that video and another one of Mike's rebuttals against me have been deleted because like most in this industry, he and the lifting dermatologist are fucking cowards. Uh, I have hundreds of emails, Lane Norton regarding, regarding metabolic damage. A trainee sent me a video that I haven't shown of him struggling, Mike Isratel, about zero reps in reserve. Ad hominem, straw man arguments, and other logic, logical fallacies, literally every single one of these motherfuckers. You're mean, Mike Isratel. You made my wife cry, Lane Norton. Lane, did she cry more when you left her pregnant for a bikini chick? You're old, Mike's special, I admit that one was dumb. And then lots and lots and lots of anecdotes. And I left one off here, which was a great ad hominem from Menno, the dick-eating douchebag, who in response to criticism of one of his articles responded, hey Lyle, are you off your meds again? Menno, if you ever get to Austin, look me up. I want to hear you say that to my fucking face. And maybe you'll find out. And you'll note that not a single one of them has anything to do with science. Those were all responses when they couldn't rebut my valid scientific criticisms, none of those represent scientific evidence. And I'll repeat, when people have said those things to them, they raise ever-loving hell because they're a bunch of fucking hypocrites. Because if you ask me a question about my work, I can provide the human evidence for it faster than these motherfuckers can hit the block button. And I've proven that repeatedly. The best they can come up with when people criticize their work and they have no rebuttal is either logic fallacies or they just block you. Or they whine like a little baby, like little Milo Wolf. Irrespective of all of that, I want to go back to that list and focus on a primary one that Lane's used, Brad's used, I'm sure Milo will have used by this point. Let's look at it. I'm focusing here on number three, you don't even do science. Now, as a logical fallacy, I'd put this somewhere between an appeal to authority, well, I do science, and an ad hominem, well, you don't even do science, as if somehow a lack of lab experience makes it impossible for you to have an opinion about scientific method. This all harkens back to the white ivory tower days of the Dark Ages, when the scientists and the intellectuals thought, well, we have the knowledge and we will keep the, and we must keep the peasants in ignorance. One does not have to have had lab experience to be able to criticize methodology, to understand when statistics are bullshit, like in Brad's paper, to be able to see the flaws. And yet, this is a common retort. I have a PhD. I've done science. Ergo, your opinion is invalid. That's not an argument, because... If these people who use this, again, Brad and Lane, and I'm sure many others have done it, could actually rebut the criticisms, they would do that instead of saying this. They've used it against me. They've used it against a lot of people. 
The thing is, it's not true. When I was at UCLA, and I could bring up repeatedly that it's one of the top-ranked universities, not only in the U.S., but in the world, ranked higher than pretty much every university all those shitheads went to, is the fact that I did intern in a lab. I worked with Dr. Whip and Dr. Ward. What they were doing was testing oxygen uptake kinetics in people that were carotid body resected. And this was in the 90s, and it was thought that the carotid body was involved in oxygen sensing to increase oxygen uptake during a maximal ramp test. And the reason that they did that is that UCLA happened to have a cohort of patients. So I would go help with lab setup. I would help with the tests. I helped with the statistics. I had done science. But I don't bring it up because it's not fucking relevant to my criticisms, the ones that make little Milo cry. So I have done science. I just don't bring it up because it's not relevant. Which brings me to this weekend. Look at the following images, you motherfuckers. So over the weekend, the following paper, From Semi-Starvation to the Stage, a case report on indicators of low energy availability in a drug-free bodybuilder during contest preparation and peak week, was provisionally accepted for publication. And I'm sure that the evidence-based fitness crew will probably not report on that for the next reason, because, hey, who's that handsome devil in the second author spot? That's right, folks, little old me, who's now got his name published on a real scientific paper. Yes, it's a case study with essentially an anecdote with more, with good measurements, but lots of these other motherfuckers have been on case studies, so mine counts, doesn't it? Oh yeah, by the way, Mike, this athlete won his physique category. Ergo, he knows more than you do because he's actually succeeded as a bodybuilder. I digress. Now, don't get me wrong. Most of what I did, all of what I did, was consulting with the study design. Alex Ritson contacted me, year, I mean, this thing started years ago, pre-COVID, I believe, and asked me to help him with the study design because he was going to be incorporating refeeds and measurements of hormones in that. And since I'm the guy who kind of formalized that back in 2004 in my guide to flexible dieting, I was the dude that he went to. He wanted to know how often to put in refeeds, how long they should be, what ideally hormonal tests should be done in terms of thyroid, et cetera, and when they should be done to be tracking this, to be able to get the data for this paper. That's what I did. So I wasn't in the lab. He's in the UK. And unlike Brad, whose names go on lots of papers out of Brazil, I'm not going to pretend that I traveled. I'm not going to pretend that I was handling fucking test tubes. I was consulted on the paper design. And of course, I got a final read-through of it before it was submitted for publication. And I'd also note in this regard that when it's published, you will see that I declared my conflict of interest on this paper, something the good Dr. Schoenfeld failed to do at least five times, and who, when this was brought to his attention, yet made yet more excuses for the fact that scientific rules don't apply to him, and has more recently written a paper about why we need to improve science, including the importance of blinding, which he never did, pre-registering, which he never did, and declaring conflicts of interest, which he never did. Rules for thee, not for he. The point of this all being that, hey guys, Lyle has now done science. I'm on a published paper, just like all you motherfuckers. I guess you'll have to come up with different logical fallacies to dismiss my valid criticisms, said criticisms, making little Milo cry so much. See you next time. Oh yeah, I don't respond to comments or questions, but I won't delete them either, like all these other people do. If you have a question for me, you can send it to questions at bodyrecomposition.com, and you probably won't get an answer, but hey, you never know.